I mutter some platitude to those still in the room and usher her out the door, wanting to put some distance between her and Rodriguez. In the corridor, she stands fiddling with her hair and her fingers as Taylor follows me out. I'll call you, Taylor, I say. And when he's almost out of earshot, I ask Anna to join me for coffee, my breath held for her response. Her long lashes flicker over her eyes. I have to drive everyone home, she says with dismay. Taylor, I call after him, making her jump. I must make her nervous, and I don't know if this is good or bad. She can't stop fidgeting. Thinking about all the ways I could make her stop is distracting. Are they based at the university? She nods, and I ask Taylor to take her friends home. There. Now can you join me for coffee? Um, Mr. Gray, uh, this really... She stops. Shit. It's a no. I'm going to lose this deal. She looks directly at me, eyes bright. Look, Taylor doesn't have to drive them home. I'll swap vehicles with Kate, if you give me a moment. My relief is tangible, and I grin. I have a date. Opening the door, I let her back into the room as Taylor conceals his puzzled look. Can you grab my jacket, Taylor? Certainly, sir. He turns on his heel, his lips twitching as he heads up the corridor. I watch him with narrowed eyes as he disappears into the elevator, while I lean against the wall and wait for Miss Steele. What the hell am I going to say to her? How would you like to be my submissive? No. Steady, Gray. Let's take this one stage at a time. Baby, I wanna touch you. I wanna breathe into your well. See, I gotta hunt you. I gotta bring you to my hell. Baby, I wanna fuck you. I wanna feel you in my bones. Boy, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna tell you. Taylor is back within a couple of minutes, holding my jacket. Will that be all, sir? Yes, thanks. He gives it to me and leaves me standing like an idiot in the corridor. How long is Anastasia going to be? I check my watch. She must be negotiating the car swap with Catherine. Or she's talking to Rodriguez, explaining that she's just going for coffee to placate me and keep me sweet for the article. My thoughts darken. Maybe she's kissing him goodbye. Damn. She emerges a moment later, and I'm pleased. She doesn't look like she's just been kissed. Okay, she says with resolve. Let's do coffee. But her reddening cheeks somewhat undermine her effort to look confident. After you, Miss Steele. I conceal my delight as she falls into step ahead of me. As I catch up with her, my curiosity is piqued about her relationship with Catherine, specifically their compatibility. I ask her how long they've known each other. Since our freshman year, she's a good friend. Her voice is full of warmth. Anna is clearly devoted. She came all the way to Seattle to interview me when Catherine was ill, and I find myself hoping that Miss Cavanaugh treats her with the same loyalty and respect. At the elevators, I press the call button, and almost immediately the doors open. A couple in a passionate embrace spring apart, embarrassed to be caught. Ignoring them, we step into the elevator, but I catch Anastasia's impish smile. Honey, I wanna break you. I wanna throw you to the hounds. Yeah, I gotta hurt you. I gotta hear it from your mouth. Boy, I wanna taste you I wanna skin you with my tongue I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna lay you in the ground 
As we travel to the first floor, the atmosphere is thick with unfulfilled desire. And I don't know if it's emanating from the couple behind us, or from me. Yes, I want her. Will she want what I have to offer? I'm relieved when the doors open again and I take her hand, which is cool and not clammy as expected. Perhaps I don't affect her as much as I'd like. The thought is disheartening. In our wake, we hear embarrassed giggling from the couple. What is it about elevators? I mutter. And I have to admit there's something wholesome and naive about their giggling that's totally charming. Miss Steele seems that innocent, just like them. And as we walk onto the street, I question my motives again. She's too young. She's too inexperienced. But damn, I like the feel of her hand in mine. In the coffee shop, I direct her to find a table and ask what she wants to drink. She stutters through her order. English breakfast tea, hot water, bag on the side. That's a new one to me. No coffee? I'm not keen on coffee. Okay, bag out tea. Sugar? No thanks, she says, staring down at her fingers. Anything to eat? No thank you. She shakes her head and tosses her hair over her shoulder, highlighting glints of auburn. I have to wait in line while the two matronly women behind the counter exchange inane pleasantries with all their customers. It's frustrating and keeping me from my objective. Anastasia. Hey, handsome, what can I get you? The older woman asks with a twinkle in her eye. It's just a pretty face, sweetheart. I'll have a coffee with steamed milk, English breakfast tea, tea bag on the side, and a blueberry muffin. Anastasia might change her mind and eat. You visiting Portland? Yes. The weekend? Yes. The weather sure has picked up today. Yes. I hope you get out to enjoy some sunshine. Please stop talking to me and hurry the fuck up. Yes. I hiss through my teeth and glance over at Anna, who quickly looks away. She's watching me. Is she checking me out? A bubble of hope swells in my chest. There you go. The woman winks and places the drinks on my tray. Pay at the register, honey, and you have a nice day now. I manage a cordial response. Thank you.